Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? We are here with Markio Bros and Mr. Redder and he is presenting Resident Evil Village. Introduce yourself and then count me down and we start the run. What's going on everybody? My name is Markio Bros, uh, commonly known as Skip as well. Ironic, right? Because I'm a speedrunner. <laughs> um, today we're going to be playing uh, Resident Evil Village. Uh, it's a horror game, so could be a couple of hours. <laughs> Get buckled in. Uh, my co-commentator today is Mr. Adder. Uh, he's going to be kind of filling in some of the strats and why I'm doing what I'm doing and a little bit of the story. <laughs> uh, so, as I just put in chat, I'm also a speedrunner, um, Mr. Adder. Um, Adder. I go by several different names. I don't know why. Uh, you let me know when you're ready to hit the button, guys. I was going to say, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. So, okay. Uh, we'll do three, two, one, and then go, right? So three, two, one, go. So I'm going to be skipping an absolute lot. So uh, hopefully... Mr. Adder is going to be able to fill in some of the story as to what is going on. But fundamentally, uh, the start of this game kind of finishes off from Resident Evil 7. Um, it's like I said to your mom. We're all happy families right now. So let's uh, see how the story unveils. So one little thing about this game, it takes, takes place three years and six months after Resident Evil 7. So, Ethan and Mia, um, if you chose the other option, kind of breaks the law a little bit. It does. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Ethan and Mia have had a child uh, called Rosemary. And literally, everything goes awry with all the... Well, from this point, it's the easiest way to put it. So basically what just happened was uh, during that entire skipped cutscene section was uh, everything was all happy families and then your wife kind of attacks you and then before you realise it, the doors have been kicked in by none other than Chris Redfield and uh, he tries to convince you that your wife isn't actually your wife. And there's a reason for that. So we'll, uh, as we pass through the game, uh, we're going to come to points in the game, in the story, that's going to kind of explain a little bit more about that thesis. But for now, I'm just going to work my way through some of this. Um, Ada, do you want to explain the first tactical resets? Yeah, so... As Skip is moving along here, um, there's no tactical resets for this first area that we're currently in until we get to a cabin a bit further along the pathway. So <laughs> he's going to go into the um, go into the cabin. A bunch of stuff's going to happen. I'm not going to spoil it for those that have never seen it. Uh, but as he comes out of it, there is going to be a point where we reset the game from the local save. <laughs> and it's going to... Excuse me. Um, it's going to literally teleport him forward by... Uh, it sounds silly, but about... About 20 15, feet. 15, 20 steps. <laughs> about 20 feet, yeah. It, it's it's crazy and... that you have to move forward to do something like that. To... It saves a little bit of time, so we use a timing method for speedrunning this game called load time removed. Uh, and that basically removes all of like the loading screens and the menu in, uh, well, the pausing at least, not so much of the menu in. Um, so going through what he was just explaining, uh, doing a, a what's known as a, a tactical reset basically, 
it's uh, it gives you the opportunity to save time. It doesn't necessarily work with a real time what we're doing today. So the the timer is actually as it is. You're not going to save any time. Um, but from a speedrunning aspect, when we submit our personal best and stuff like that, that is how we uh, calculate the closest times for our for our timing. Pedro. <laughs> I just spotted Pedro. He looks so good. <laughs> so yeah, the first tactical reset's coming up. Um, so in theory, it's going to save about 15 seconds. But of course, as a timer, we're doing it this way. We're not got our own timer. Yeah. So it's not going to actually include that 15 seconds. Yeah. Don't even know whether I should do it. Yeah, do it. See, the time's completely stopped. But for you, it's it's not. The time's still going. But in a... The hell am I? That's it. That That's literally it. If I turned around at that point, you'd say, oh, well, it was like crossing a room. You know what I mean? But from a speedrunning aspect, that kind of has a detrimental kind of... Uh, effect on your 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 time and output and it's little things like that that accumulate into big time losses and stuff like that well actually on a more positive note big time saves yeah and the other thing without uh, throughout this run i may have to remind skip this um it, it does um but picking and choosing your fights sometimes <laughs> I'm a fighter, and <laughs> but no, picking and choosing your fights constitute whether or not you're gonna time save, you're gonna PB. You know it happens. What the hell? But rooting in this game is key. It is. It is. I mean, rooting in any game for speedrunning uh, is absolute a key keystone for getting a good time. Um, so this room, Ada, do you want to explain why we only take care of a couple of enemies? Yeah, so I found out myself uh, through another speedrunner in the community that literally you just run up to the stairs, it triggers the enemies, you come downstairs, go to another window, come back shoot the guy that skips just killed through the door and in the building with you and it triggers the entire simulation to complete a lot quicker meaning you can get into the fight that we're just about to get into with all the enemies and it's a potential time save again I did. Yeah. Uh, it's a potential time save of... Uh, was it, it about 30 seconds or something? Yeah. Or a minute? So the reason why I'm standing here is... Yeah, I'm, I'm bottlenecked per se. But an enemy is going to spawn behind me. And I kind of want to get the enemy as early as possible for timing method at least with like the timing standpoint I kind of want to make it so that um, as soon as I physically see him I want to shoot him and the reason for that is no <laughs> the earliest that you have a shot on the guy on the roof that I took out right the timer starts and from there uh, it's kind of like um, the timer starts and you literally have absolutely no um, choice over it. So the faster you want to get through this section, um, you kind of want to instigate the shot and the enemies uh, being triggered. The guy behind yeah. me is a big guy and we're going to try and further that time saving by attacking him early. <laughs> it's about right, any other? That is about right. Um, so different runners do different tactics here. Um, so 
the one that Skip's doing is one that I use personally. Um, I just don't use that weapon. I use a different weapon. I have just realised there is an advert going as well, so... Uh, yeah. Back it up, back it up. So now we are on uh, basically a little bit of RNG in this game in certain sections. This is one of them to see how long it actually takes you to get through this section. The, uh, the moment that we're looking for in order to continue is an arrow to the knee. That, and that's the adventure of a game complete. Good night. See you later. <laughs> if this was Skyrim, that would be the case. My adventure would be over, but no. This is Resident Evil Village. We have to pursue. <laughs> but yeah, um, so basically the tactic Skip was using, um, for those that didn't hear it during the ad break, um, is literally you back yourself into a corner, use your weapon uh, to shoot the enemies around you. A big... Um, Lycan or Urias, should I say, yeah. is the yeah. name of the enemy. He's basically um, these spawns... enemies, but just huge. <laughs> yeah, he spawns in behind you, and you have the opportunity to kill him or get him to low enough health. So when he breaks through the barriers, you can literally just spin around, shoot him once, and he's done. Gets you into this go. scene that he's in a lot quicker. To get the knee skip. Take an arrow to the knee. This is weird. Because you go through. And then you end up turning around. There's two points in this game. That uh, it, it forces you to do that. And we, we came up with the idea. That during the cutscene. Because we don't actually watch the cutscenes anymore. As you can tell. Um, we, we, uh, we came up with the idea. That uh, during the cutscene. As you walk through the door. And you you approach the cloaked old haggard woman. Um, somewhere during that cutscene, you're actually turned around. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch the cutscene because that doesn't save time. <laughs> Although saying that, cutscenes do actually come into uh, play for. Hey, I'm not doing too bad on the menu. And... No, um, cutscenes do take a play in one part of this. Um, it's one cutscene that has been permitted. There's nothing uh, I can do here. Running community. There's absolutely nothing I can do here. Um, because this yeah. is technically an auto scroller. Hello, lady. This way. This is the way. This is the way, chat. Wait, the wrong game, right? No. Yeah. This is the Pedro. <laughs> but no, um, so cutscenes in this game are detrimental. You're only allowed to use them to heal up. Um, but there is one permitted cutscene. Uh, which will, I'm sure Skip will possibly use when we get to that section. And I can explain a little bit more about it. What's that? The um, Lady D. The Mask placing. Oh yeah, cutscene. that's that's aggravating. But it is what it is. Don't worry. I'm trying not to breathe in the smoke. Excuse me. I know. Excuse me. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> she didn't even get to say your kind. That's that's just, that's kind of quick. Don't get it. I'd be kind of happy. I mean, I did a did a little bit of a run yesterday with uh, Ada. We did a, a race, and I was actually getting some serious gold splits um, at this point in the game, which is really cool. Uh, Ada, did you want to explain uh, gold splits and stuff like that whilst I uh, go and put these in the door? Yep. Yeah. Um, so basically, gold splits are you've seriously beaten your time. Um, compared to your previous runs. Um, so they're basically, you've set a pe personal best for that section of the game by a detriment, uh, like a large amount. Um, so, for example, I got several yesterday. Unfortunately, 
because of my runs were only small, but they were enough of a change to nothing but blood and death. Um, sorry, my words. I, I am still waking up. <laughs> <laughs> it's half past ten in the they, UK. It's uh, it's acceptable. <laughs> it's also my day off. <laughs> awesome. But no, it's um. Literally, you just save so much time. Yeah. And you've saved so much time that the game, it, it's literally a reward to see a gold split. Yeah. So you're, you're almost going to see all of the uh, the bosses in this game. So a little bit of, a little bit about the game log, because we've explained a little bit about speedrunning and, and a couple of strats and tactics and stuff like that. So the lore of this game, we kind of touched upon when we started this uh, run. At this current point in the game, Ethan, the main character who we are currently at, uh, playing as, he's now trying to get his daughter back. Uh, Miranda is the protagonist in this game, and she has kidnapped your daughter uh, and is going to use her for personal gain. We now have to go through the village. The village is what, Ada? A maze. <laughs> it, is, it is. It's a true maze. So the village is an area in... I think it's Transylvania? Is it Transylvania? It's it's Romania? Somewhere it's based, around there. It, it, it's based... Um, Loosely. Yes. Yeah. So basically, uh, we've come to this secluded area of the world, and um, it's completely governed by uh, Miranda. And Miranda is the evil, evil. Oh no, is the evil lady. Um, and we. Uh, we have to kind of go through different areas of the village, and she kind of governs over uh, all of those lords of the village. And now, we're about to meet a wonderful character called the Duke. Uh, so, the Duke is a traveling tradesman, um, so you can buy your weapons, ammo, health parts, upgrades, all from the Duke. You'll see him several times throughout the game. And uh, after defeating some of the enemies, you'll see him... Um, shall we say, playing with a memento of the previous boss. <laughs> hey up, bug. Oh mm. my god, Mr. Puggeroo, thank you for gifting five subs, dude. Thank you, my friend. So, you'll probably notice uh, me put my thumb up when I see uh, my community, or anybody really, um, support the channel, support the, uh, the run, basically. These people are amazing. I really want to say thank you to my community. <laughs> They they inspire me to pursue greatness every day, and uh, I wouldn't be here without them, honestly. So, massive thank you to you guys. Yeah, um, another thing to note within this game, there are a lot of scenes that you'd think we'd be able to skip, but we can't skip. So, for example, being hooked up on there, going to do the health part on your hands, you can't skip it, you know. Opening of doors, you can't skip how slow it opens. That menu wasn't too bad. So, <laughs> it's going to sound crazy. Um, yes, I've run this game a lot uh, on PC, but Recently, I've been having to prepare a save file on console, and I've been forced to use a controller. So, <laughs> yesterday we had a, a wonderful race 
to kind of prep me again for playing on the PC. So thank you to Ada for that. <laughs> yeah, and by now I am looking at the timer on stream. Are we, um, am I doing good? So with the load removal... I should have given you my um, we, Yeah. So the load removal that we've actually... Currently, we use... Um, we're roughly about on par. So you're looking about 16 minutes if you'd taken the load times out. Yeah, yeah. And here she is. The lady of the castle. Lady Dimitrescu. The she... only horror game where you want to get captured. <laughs> She's huge, man. Did I get it? He's a like eight foot monster. Oh, I eight got foot it, monster. Okay, that's not going to seem con uh, like a big deal, but believe me, I always try to aim for that shot, and the success rate is about seventy-five percent. <laughs> so the fact that I got it, I'm kind of happy. But yeah, honestly though, with um, with this game, rooting is key. And you'll see Skip using different weapons, so at the moment he's using a rocket pistol. Um, only because it just allows you to... I don't have to be super it, accurate. Yeah, it allows him not to be super accurate and allows him to move a lot more freely. I feel no pain! Excuse me. Uh, he's wrong going, yeah. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure if you watch that back, I selected the Magnum. Pretty sure if you watch it back. Chat, what do you reckon? Do you reckon I, I actually equipped that uh, Magnum there? I'm pretty damn sure I did. Should I open the door for, for easy strats or should I get took? Nah, we'll get took. <laughs> we'll get took. We want to get we want to get caught by a lady D. She's like a. She's got to be what? Seven foot? Seven foot three? She's huge, man. She's uh, absolutely she, huge. She's actually. Um, so, as a. Comparison, um, so Master Chief is about seven foot. Shall I give you the two words? She is taller than Excuse Master me. Chief. Is she really? Yes. Wow. Uh, Master Chief is huge. Lady, like, you know what? It... <laughs> I find tall characters absolutely fascinating because, you know, in in the gaming in the gaming world, characters are have you done to my not daughter? normally extremely tall unless they're a boss, right? And uh, I live that every day because um, <laughs> I'm a giant. <laughs> I'm literally six foot eight. Um, for you guys that work on a different uh, measurement scale, that's 203 centimeters, which is crazy, right? So, what the hell? Master Chief is seven feet with all of his armor on. Lady D is nine foot six inches. She's never nine foot. She's a. Take that, dude. Uh, she's a big girl. But no, um, so... You know, a lot of this game, nice. we've muscle memoried the rooting as well. Yeah. Um, so... If you take your time in a lot of these sections, especially these... Um, you are... Here she is. We this is the moment. <laughs> Everybody waits for this moment. <laughs> Look at the pure size of this lady. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta skip it. Well, I just wanted to show you just how vast that lady is. 
She's huge, man. She's huge. <laughs> And uh, another little trick, uh, Ethan Winters is 5'11". So, so, so average honestly, height, that's fine. He's an average height. Yeah. And you could see how much more she towers over you. Bro, she had to claw through the doorway. I argue with doorways. Don't get it wrong. But she, she's next level. So, an interesting thing is about to happen. Once... Once Skip gets through, I believe it's the next door. She's going to get me. Yep. Oh! The clench was real, everybody. <laughs> There's only two points in this game that really make you bear down every muscle that you've got right. And it's that one, and then one a little later with the fish guy. But, we need to get some of this liquid, by the way. Liquid sewing kit, anybody? The liquid surgical kit? Yeah. So to also put this into perspective, by the time you the game expects you to get to this point, you meant to be roughly about forty about forty minutes in. So so far we've already saved about twenty minutes. I'm I'm kind of interested to see whether I get a PB today. That'd be kinda of nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. I'm not even going to entertain the value of that guy. Me and that piano do not get along. <laughs> We've never gotten along. <laughs> I was going to say, there are times where you can get that perfectly first time, but honestly, getting that piano, it's knowing where the keys are, knowing which order they're in. And a lot of the time, you, you're limited to time as well. Like, it'll force yeah. you to not have... Um, it'll force you to not have... Hold on. Let me see. Oh, she's It'll force you to basically get limited um, with time. Like, oh, you now can't carry out another uh, input until... Huh? Come on. That is another one of the um, areas that a lot of people struggle on, is getting the is getting the bells. Mm. You need to get them to open the area that we're not going to just yet, uh, which by the splits is the rooftops. Our main objective right now is to collect four masks. I This one's a little tricky because I don't need to do some menuing. Uh, we need to get four masks basically to get through to the next area. Because there's a locked door, if you remember, we went into a door with a plaque on it that had writing on it. And then during that cutscene, we got caught. We got caught by Lady D and her daughters, right? Um, so we're having to go through the, the game and try and locate in the castle those masks. 
Can I get past you, big swiggity? She's gonna get me. She's... Can you move? Could, could you? She's stuck. Could you? Could you? Could you let me pass, please? Gonna have to go back in the door, right? Let me. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, okay, we're free. <laughs> Honestly, she. Um... There's a high chance of that happening, and the. Oh, she's just annoying. But um... it's the it's a timing aspect with that. It is literally if you time it just right, and she gets a little bit further ahead, you can either squeeze past her, or when she turns to attack you, it um. She moves out of the way slightly, so you can then skirt past her. But then there's a high chance of getting hit by her. Yeah. Which then, being hit by her slows you down dramatically. Uh, yeah. I mean, touching upon what we, we kind of discussed earlier as well, about uh, choosing your battles and knowing when to fight and when to move forward and stuff like that. Typically, that section of trying to get past Lady Dimitrescu, um, if you try and rush forward, there's a chance, there's a there's a really good chance that you can get past her and she is in a position where you can slip past her, right? But typically, um, you run a, a lower chance than if you waited for one second and allowed her to move forward. Um, <laughs> if you waited one second, she would actually move past the pillar on the left Allowing you to, um... No ladder, thank you. So the game wants me to use a ladder there, and I do I do not want to use a ladder, because that's not good for time, right? Um, so yeah. If you wait that one second, the pillar on the left, because she's so vast, because she's so huge, um, the gap between her and the pillar is really small, so you can kind of chance it. But for uh, safety, if you want to, you can just wait that one second and she'll move past. Now, I didn't unlock the door, did I? Stupid man uh, thing. You won't live long, even here we go again, run. but that's uh, acceptable. Yeah, um, the other thing is, um, with the ladders, the reason why we're skipping the ladders is because every time you use a ladder to go up or down, you're losing like five, ten seconds. Where does she come from? Oh, she comes from there. Is that door gonna open before she gets to me? Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. So here oh, is an opportunity for. <laughs> so here was an opportunity. So while we're waiting for them pillars to come down, that door to unlock, um, there is a room we can go into where, would you believe, the Duke is magically there. True. Selling his wares. And in that, that is a permitted watch the cutscene just to hear love. For those people in my community, you know what time it is? It's boss time. <laughs> so this is one of five boss fights. Off the top of my head. Four? Well, four, but then you got five if you include Miranda. Um, yeah, this is the first boss fight. Oh. Where literally... <laughs> you aim... So in this one, you've got to aim for Lady D, who is now transformed into a... Giant amalgamation Absolutely. of just grotesqueness. Yeah. Early roof. Early roof. Early roof. She's gonna come back up. Oh, the accuracy though! Oh yeah. Take one for the chat. There we go. Chat, that was for you. T 
technically another auto scroller because she's gonna fly around the building a couple of times and then she's gonna be like, okay, I'm done flying. He's not shooting me. I'm just gonna go in for the kill. Uh, which is now the mini troll. <laughs> Uh, I think it's five shots, right? There we go. Yep, five shots. So, by now with the LRT, we would have saved uh, roughly about two, three minutes. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I, honestly, I'm enjoying this run. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm very much enjoying the run that I'm doing right now. Right. So... Part of the bigger picture is now that we've um, now that we've got the masks and we've killed Lady Dimitrescu. Basically, each of the four lords of this village. Um, th now, this is where the story gets a bit dark. Um, so, your daughter Rose has been split up into four parts. I know. I'm just going to give you a second to take that on board. Um, so your daughter is technically in four flasks. Uh, we've got one of them. Each one of the lords has one of those flasks. Has each, uh, each part of your, your daughter. And you want to go around and collect those parts of your daughter, right? Um, so we've just got the first one. Now to continue. I do, I do like the castle section though, because it's uh, it was one of the sections of the game that was almost the most confusing section for me. Getting the masks, I was just like, I'm always missing a mask. Um, Ada, what's the most confusing part of the game? What you reckon? Do you reckon well, Eisenberg's is the, the most confusing section of the game? Depending on everybody else is, um, well, everybody has a different way of interpreting the game. Go for that so, shot. Ada. Yep. Yeah. I literally only learned that straight yesterday. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and it, uh, honestly, I taught him that strat, and well, I showed him that strat a couple of times. He was like, "How are you saving so much time?" And it's like, "Well, yeah. I just say, you just save 15 seconds." It was 18, actually. It was 18 seconds. Oh, was it 18? Yeah, yeah. It was 18 seconds. I turn around, I shoot that. Oh my god, that was a good shot. But no. um... So, the most confusing part that I struggled with to ah! begin with. My brain went forward in time. Went to the other puzzle. So, the most confusing point for me originally, and most people actually struggle with, is not the castle, but it is Heisenberg. I struggled with it. Skips definitely struggled with it. Oh, Heisenberg's area. <laughs> Ain't about that, man. Eisenberg's area was a royal pain in my booty, I'm telling you. Uh, so, the shot that I just took, um, typically the game wants you to follow a set path, and it, I'm going to follow that set path to a degree. Um, it wants me to turn left now and then use the iron key to go through the door and stuff like that, but... And then go up on the roof and come down, but as you can see... I don't need to do that because I took a shot, which... Does it break the lock or something on the outside of there? Yeah, so it's one of them locks. Um, so when you came out of um, the castle, uh, you shot that lock off. Yeah. So it's the exact same lock. So you've shot it off from the opposite Why side. The Duke again? So over on the roof and stuff like that, and... It still disconnects it because you use the rocket pistol. It's damage um, damages a lock enough to you know break it open and. Not 
bad, not bad. So now we've got to go and visit um, Benevento. Yeah. Um, to basically go and get the next part of, as you probably saw on stream, uh, Rose. There's going to be a, a really. I'm going to. I'm going to forewarn you now. <laughs> there is a grim, grim boss coming up, and uh, there's a there's a skip for it that I'm going to go for. It what? might actually take me Ethan, two tries. Come with me. Um, I have to tell you. But I'm going to go for it anyway, just just as a showcase so you guys can see. Oh, you don't technically have to go through the normal means of the game um but we'll get on to that in a little bit i don't really want to be thinking about that boss <laughs> you'll understand when we get there um a good uh, this whole section of the game uh it differs for um it, it's got a, a difference than most games because this area of the game is non-difficulty um, there's no difference whatsoever in whether you play it on casual or whether you play it on villager shadows difficulty which is the hardest right there's four difficulty settings for the game it has absolutely no effect there's there's only the the, the boss and we don't technically need weapons and you'll see why we want our weapons but this uh, this get this area of the game is I don't know man it's the most disturbing for me. <laughs> it is it, it is the most disturbing out of <laughs> out, out of all the boss fights. Yeah, I mean there are creepy there are creepy things that are coming up, but this is the most um, unnecessary. Unnecessary. <laughs> um, so the area that we're going to go into. Um, Benevento. Um, we need to go and find six items, uh, which are all. I'm going to try for. Uh, I'm going to try for the speed trap. Yeah. Um, so there's six items that we need to go and find to be able to get out of. I didn't get it. Benny's house, basically. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah. It's a really small. Um, it's a really, really, really small window. There's only a couple of frames that you can do it on. Basically, when you go out and come back in, it kind of resets your, your run speed so that you can run through this a little faster <laughs> as you normally would because uh, the game kind of slows you down. Because no running in the house, you know? <laughs> go on, yeah. sorry. Collect six items. Yeah, so we've got to go and collect six items that... Um distributed throughout the ground floor of this, or should I say the basement level of this building. <laughs> it might um, work. But if you paid close enough attention to the beginning of the game, there is going to be one item from your original house when you were putting the baby to sleep that makes a, an appearance very shortly. Yeah, it does. To be honest, if you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't have known it was there. But the only reason that we know it's there is because we we tried to break this game down a little bit uh, to make it as optimal as possible. Where's my gun? So Benny has taken all your weapons. So here's item number one: winding key. So. We need to get the winding key and once we deal with the winding key's location, <clears throat> you'll end up getting the second item. Yeah. Which you need to run back to that body. Fortunately, um, you don't have to experience a ton of the getting the wedding ring and stuff like that and washing it. Yeah, getting the wedding ring for the door, because um, that gives you the code to the door, which was your anniversary date, which was the 29th of the 5th, 2011. 
but those that don't do American style timing. Uh, Is that dates. right? Oh five two nine eleven. Yeah. I mean, for us that'd be the fifth of September, right? But for America, it'd be the no. it'd be the ninth of May. Uh, no, it's the 29th of May. Oh, two, oh yeah, it's 029. I can't math, everybody. So this um, so, this thing, this uh, mannequin, this articulated mannequin, is basically the center of the area right now. We, we kind of have to revolve our life around it, um, getting the items that we need, right? Typically, to get the code for the door that I opened immediately. Um, you'd have to go through another door, you have to get another key, and da da da. Um, but I don't have to do any of that. I don't have to get the wedding ring, I don't have to break into the other room, I don't have to wash the ring to get the code from inside the ring. Speaking of the ring, well, 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 <laughs> what do we have here? <laughs> The elusive 29th month. <laughs> yeah, that elusive 29th month. <laughs> oh no, that's going to be a thing now. <laughs> oh, the 29th so, month. With the film we've just watched, um, it opens up a new area. Um, he's going to get the fourth item. No, third item. So I'm basing it off of the splits I use. Um, yeah. Which Nobody's kind saying... of the the film projects where the fourth item's going to be, which is the breaker box key. I knew it. I knew it. You're not going to let me live that down. I'm gonna have to get a new T-shirt design. The 29th month, you know. Oh dear. So, the tunnel we're going down now is the one that was seen in the video. Um, yep. So we need to go and get a breaker box key, a relief of a child, and a fuse. So, we're gonna go down the ladder. Get the break box key. Which for some reason is down here. I mean, why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? Oh, here it comes. Oh, so here now it here comes. is the best part. It's, what do the you best. mean it's the best part? It's it's by far not the best part. Oh. Well, the best scary part. Come on, the best scary part. Um, so this is where... Disagree. We first meet the baby. <sighs> Warning, uh, you know it's grim. Um, I gave you plenty of enough heads up. If you just joined, I'm sorry. There it is. I'm gone. Bye. I'm not hanging around for you. No. <laughs> I'm not waiting for that guy. I'm not looking at him up close. I've seen him in the uh, the figurine collection. To baby, no, you can, <laughs> you can keep time, it, aren't you? huh? I am playing this safe, my dude. It's not sucking Matos today. Oh, you do it that way round. Mm. You do differently. Yes. Ooh, we may have to confer. No, so. Uh... Once you've got the scissors and stuff like that, and you've gone and got the break box key, you go and or you're going back to get the break box key. You open a door. Hey. And then. Hey, can we just talk about that for one second? Is that different on console? Because. Yeah. I remember messing that up the other day and accidentally putting the scissors and then you followed suit. Mm -hmm. 
Right, here it is. I'm gonna need a little bit of silence. Uh, you know, I'm listening for audio cues now to try and do the baby skip. Grim thing. Did not work. So that's what he should do. I don't want him to do what he should do. I want him to do what I want him to do, which is... Why did I end up there? Um, I want him to kind of move back and go into the wall. It's going to sound crazy. Didn't do it again, dude. Am I going a little too early, do you reckon? Or take the second thump. Take the second thump. And start your yeah, count from there. Yeah. This is quite a... It's not so much tricky, but... You have to deal with that. It's kind of annoying. That's the baby skip. I'm sorry it took three times. Um, but it is really, really temperamental. Um, it's a horrible thing to do. And now, now is another one of those moments in the game where it's uh, full on clench mode. Yeah, try not to put scissors in the fuse board this time. Oh, it's now that I have to try and do it, not the fuse. Ah, I still tried to do it wrong. <laughs> You're throwing me off, dude! What do you mean? <laughs> He's coming! He's coming to get me! You might get me! Oh! Oh, look at it! So, with the baby skip... Uh, not with the baby skip. So, <laughs> not the baby me! <laughs> But with the um, with that room, mm -hmm. once you get the break box key, if you go back the route you opened and come back through where you got the scissors, get the break box key, uh, put the break box key in the lock, get the relief, go back through, <laughs> go back through the um, scissor room. Yeah, you, you can, can do that, but it's extremely, really it's extremely timed, isn't it? Because he'll always appear the other side, and then if you mess it up, you'll have to wait for him to move. But I thought I could do that but for for everybody's enjoyment, rather than watching oh, yeah, my toes know, yeah. get enjoyed by the grotesque thing. It's it's just easier to do it this way. You don't really save that much time, and because we're not running on LRT right now, it's um it's perfectly fine. I'd rather run the safe version there. Oh yeah, and come so on, RNG. Me, yeah, RNG C. Um, so Benny, um, or Benny, uh, Benevento is um likes her dolls. So she's possessed this one little doll here. It's called Angie. Now, RNG, the best RNG. Ah, she didn't do it. So I got good RNG on the first point, and the second point was kind of annoying. Um, so she moves to two places whilst you're trying to attack her. Uh, we got the first one. That was the best RNG, just from the other side of that handrail. Um, the worst RNG is she's behind the cupboard to the right and then the second point this is actually the worst RNG is to have her in this back cupboard uh, the best one is really close to the door um, so it kind of we got good RNG but then we got bad RNG so it's 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 okay I'll accept my I'll, I'll take my, my doubles with, with my L's you know what I mean we got half and half so I'll accept that that makes two yeah so now we collected two of the uh, rows, um, their samples of rows. 
and we are now going to make our way to um, a boss called Moreau, who, um, to get the, f the flask, uh, Moreau is pretty simple. You literally just walk up and get it. Thanks, Bug. Um, but it's, at the moment, apart from uh, going down in lifts, that's pretty much all we got at the moment. Mm -hmm. My boy Yato is in the chat. Yato is a fantastic speedrunner. He uh, taught me a lot uh, in regards to my Resident Evil 5 run. Um, it's nice to see you here, dude. Alright, uh, I'm going to go for the rocket pistol, I think, here. Oh, no, 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 I don't. Good shot. Oh, I'm good, man. You should know this. I do this every day, even when I'm not streaming. <laughs> My guy's I'm just, just looking out for me, team. right? <laughs> Honestly, though, um, so there is a lot of running in this. Uh, you get to see the village in multiple different times. Got him. Um, so after Moreau, uh, as we're making our way to the next boss, we, the village had changed a little bit, but you won't see that until after Moreau. This boss is, well, say boss, that creature is basically what, it's almost like a smaller version of what you actually see in this area at the beginning of the game that we were waiting for behind the, the barricaded area. Uh, which we are now walking back behind that barricaded area now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Yo, Yato. Yeah. Yato did the funny. Mr. Yatagomo with the FOMO. I was going to say, Did I'm I actually get it right this time? Support. I'm sure I got it right this time. I've been saying Mr. Yolo with a FOMO. <laughs> and it's just like, brah. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, we've, with, this, with this game, Skip, um, actually, honestly, when I said to Skip, I'm going to try this game with keyboard and mouse, he kind of laughed originally. I did. I did. I was just like, no, you can't do that. Play the controller. It'll definitely... F no, he was right. He was absolutely I... right. I was like, okay. My community was like, just give it a whirl. Just give it a shot. See how you get on. Yeah, I, I honestly... So playing this on PC with a controller, I set a time... I weren't really happy with it and was like, hang on, because it's first person, I can play this as with keyboard and mouse. Did this get revived? Yeah, with the medkit, dude. Somebody sprayed and, a first aid spray on this game. And then I played keyboard and mouse and set an even better time. And I was just like, okay, I'm just going to keep practicing like this. Don't get the ladder. Don't get the ladder. Don't, didn't get the ladder. I'm not gonna... Remember, pick your battles. I'm not gonna fight these, technically. Get up the ladder, dude. Oh, I was using an F... Uh... F prompt. Yeah, I was using F prompt, but it's just walk. I am the dumb. So, for those that have <laughs> played Resident Evil 5 and have seen Skip or myself play this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
um, the cut seat. Uh, so basically, we're going to get in this boat. We're going to drive along. And we're going to skip the cut scene. But during the cut scene, you get to see the boulder punching man himself. Okay. For everybody in the chat, actually, I'm, I'm looking towards some of the people that have played this game, uh, played uh, Resident Evil 5 and played this game, right? Um, there is a, a quote in this game that has zero... We, we can't figure it out why this person would actually say this line and how they know about him, right? I get it? I did. So at the end of Resident Evil 5, um, the game came out in like 2005, so if you haven't already played it, um, this spoiler, I'm sorry. What am um, I supposed to do? <laughs> basically, uh, Wesker, at the end of Resident Evil 5, the during the, the last battle, um, Chris is kind of forced to uh, punch a boulder to save Sheva so she can cross the the lava river, right? Where is it? Um, we don't understand how the boss in this game calls him a boulder punching a-hole when there was nobody there apart from two people. If you move forward there, he will eat you every single time, whether I want him to or not. So, to answer that, um, it's more of a, it was added as a fan service meme material without any concern for implications. In the Japanese script, oh, he actually calls him a gorilla looking B word. Oh. <laughs> savage. Just a little savage there. But, of course, the translation between Japanese and English has, to be fair, is mistranslated. Uh, missing details and made up a contradictory. Uh, it made up. Contradictory details. Nice. Glad I got that. Ah, oh, it's bum clenching time. I'm the best. But uh, yarn. Is he um, gonna get me? Is he gonna get me? Is he gonna get me? The mycelium wasn't around in Resident Evil Five. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, they they do cover that in the the lore of this game. There's a bunch of documents and stuff like that near the end of the game that if you uh, if you play this game, you you'll know. Um, and basically, the the mold that is happening here has absolutely no correlation whatsoever to the um, ooh, bad shot. What's it called? Um, Last Pelagus, right? Has absolutely nothing to do with the Last Pelagus in Africa. Because they say, even uh, Resident Evil 7, they think that uh, the Bakers have the similar, like, genome. But uh, apparently it's not. It absolutely has nothing to do with uh, what's going on here. This originated here. So it's a little bit confusing. I'm not too sure. So if anybody in the chat has any idea as to why that happened, then uh, I am absolutely... I'm all ears, man.
Okay, yeah. I gotta... I gotta puzzly... Uh, another puzzle thing to do. Ah! What? I got another puzzle to do just after this. Oh my god, I can't even... I can't even menu. But no, honestly, in this game... Um... <laughs> Okay. Um, there are several tactical restarts, um, which, or well, a couple of tactical restarts that could have happened in this area. It's just, you know, for, in a way, a gameplay. Um, There's probably faster routing on a keypad, but I, I do that one for safety, honestly. Yeah. There are skips that we're not using, um, mainly because of giving you guys the full experience. Yeah. Uh, we could use them. Um, there is a way, um, for some reason, I manage to do it every single time. Get inside actually him, right? get him. Yeah. Get in front of uh, Moreau there. It's boss time. Chain, Blink, and you kind of miss it. Or not. I mean... Yeah, I've had that. I had, uh, I had the wrong gun equipped, which uh, forced his movement to go further than normal. That's That was actually my bad. Um, but it is what it is. I'll take the L. That's fine. So now that we've collected all the keys, we've now got a six wing key, which allows us to open the last gate that we ever need to open. Well, not this one, but. The, the last main the gate. One, the last main gate to the last <laughs> major boss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is Heisenberg. If you guys However, have this on PlayStation 4, I will warn you right now that uh, the Heisenberg fight on PS4 is extremely difficult on uh, Village of Shadows difficulty. Uh, I'm very adept at this game, obviously, and I've never been so wound up by a boss. <laughs> <laughs> it took him three hours on Village of Shadows. Yeah, yeah, it did. And that's because of the frame rate issue. <laughs> so yeah, with the PS4, PS4 Pro, uh, the frame rate issues in the game are unbelievably bad. Uh, points, the game blinks. Yeah, it's like it you're does, blinking, yeah. but you're not blinking. It's basically the, the console taking the time that it needs to load the next area. And because I run pretty quickly... Uh, the game's just like, like it's got the lullaby channel on. It's like, oh, what's going on now? <laughs> oh, okay. So we're on our way to go and see Eisenberg. Get out of my way. Normally I don't shoot him, but there's a chance that he will headbutt me, which causes me to slow down. It's faster to actually shoot him at that point. So here is the last main gate that we need to open. So when we get world record attempt, I feel like I'm on good par for a PB right now, I'll be honest. I can't really check though, because I'm not doing LRT, but I guess we can run it against IGT, which is in game time. Too early. <laughs> Bye. So with this um, area that skips in, it's literally uh, 
to be fair, it's just a filler space. That's what it feels like to pad the game out a little bit more. Um, yeah. In speedrunning, it's literally you pull these two levers, the gate falls down. I mean, to, fair, to uh, be fair, we did have it with the castle. Um, yeah. Had the whole area where we've got to kind of kill all the enemies and kind of get past them and stuff like that. So. In all in all fairness, um, the gate coming down takes up roughly the 15 seconds. I don't necessarily have to kill everybody. It's just uh, I'm keeping them at bay, I guess. Um, yeah, you just need to keep them at bay. Um, so using a rocket pistol here and in the next part you're going into, because uh, there is a chance that the enemies can grab you. But if you do a preemptive rocket shot as you're going across a stone bridge, um, can save you time as well. Please don't grab me. There's a high chance. Oh, no, we're okay. There's a high chance that uh, there's always a guy there and you'll kind of grab you and there'll be literally no frames whatsoever he will just grab you i'm gonna try and do a run through okay, big guy. i got it that's nice i got the pipe uh, i got the bypass that was kind of nice yeah i personally myself in that whole area i fired two rounds do you um yes So I, don't, I don't mind two... taking them out if I'm on an auto an auto queue, you know what I mean? Oh no, in so it's two rounds. So the one at the bridge mm -hmm. and the one at that big guy at the top. That's the two rounds I fire. Good to know. Um if you uh, so part of this is if you time it right, if you come off that zip line. Last time. You can you can actually block quick enough, and you block that guy that potentially could grab you. That's not good. Now, is he gonna drop a friend? Two more shots for good luck. That's how I'd do it anyway. <laughs> is he gonna bring a fella? Is he gonna bring a friend? No, no friend today, chat. Oh, he was a little close. That's okay. He's dead. But in all fairness, um, that's the brother of the one you killed right in the beginning. Yeah. There is a third brother, which we will see. But we are now ready to take all of the flasks that we've been collecting, go put them in a giant chalice next to the Duke, and then make our way to what's known as the world's biggest maze. It is crazy. It is. There's like, oh, what's that? Uh, what's the artist that does like the stairs going upwards and sideways and stuff like that? That, that's kind of like what Eisenberg's factory is, is similar to, but just darker and more industrial. <laughs> yeah, it is the biggest confusing I'll tell place. You what, trying, to, you... trying to get through, like learn the castle is, is honestly one of the most confusing things going through. I remember my first time playing this and I was just shook with how difficult the routing, the orienteering is of his castle, his, um, his factory, because it, it's all the same. Every, every area is the same, and you have to go up the stairs to go down a floor, to go down a floor, to go up a stair. Ah, oh, it's, it's crazy. But it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, and if you do... It, so the routing that, was that I use is the... Well, Skip uses here. Or that he will be using. Hmm. 
is, I think, very, very similar to the one I use. We each do the Heisenbergs a slightly different way. Do we? A slightly different. Which part? Um, so going to get the first mold. Oh, we do. We do, yeah. All right. You attack, I don't. That makes sense. That makes that makes sense. So I'll explain a little bit more about it when he gets to it. We are um, technically going back to where we uh, started, right? So in a way, the area we're going back to now is the um, exit point of the castle. So when we've left the castle, this is where we came out to. Uh, I'm going to put the giant chalice in. If Skip can take a look at the chalice while it's going down. Yep, I got you. You should see the umbrella logo. Cool, right? It's nice to see a little bit of an incorporation from older games and stuff like that into this one, considering that uh, this one is... When, when did the first Resident Evil game come out for the PlayStation 1? Was it like 2001, somewhere around there? Somewhere around there, yeah. This this um, franchise is huge. Like It's been going for a long time. And honestly, this I'm is... That's because I got you to turn around and yeah. have a look at the umbrella logo. It is, yeah. It is. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but in all honesty, um, this does have connections to um, umbrella, which I'm still trying to find out hmm. when they started, when umbrella pulled out and stuff like that. So in in fairness, this could have a connection to Los Blagas. I'd like to speak to you about Ooh. Wait. 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 I might have cracked it, dude. It's not a trap. Because Chris is part of this, and Chris is part of the BSAA, right? Um, uh, he isn't. A, in this version of the game, he is not. He's yeah. not. He's no longer a part of BSAA. Hmm. I'm thinking, because he's here and in the environment, and... Chris already knows about Miranda and stuff. Maybe Heisenberg and him have, are away. I don't know. Maybe maybe Heisenberg just knows who Chris is. Yeah. Don't, so, don't uh, depending on... So, going through this tunnel uh, that he's coming down, he's coming into a scrapyard of sorts. And timing-wise... There is a slim chance that you could possibly get stuck going up some of these jumps. I got it. Yeah, I got I got stuck there. But it depends on. It is a pure timing thing. Every time I've run through, uh, for some reason, I never get stuck. I think I run through it a little quicker or something. And, uh, or a little slower. I did. Ma did. Maybe I don't know because we our times for this section are incredibly close. So maybe maybe it's um I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll figure it out at some point. Um, easy way for me to find out. Uh, let me change this. Compare against real time. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Actually, I should. Um, this place is messed up. I can check my splits upstairs. afterwards and see. How I fared time was uh, against real time. Uh, to be fair, um, I can already tell you, you are five minutes behind my time. Really? Yep. Maybe. But then again, we're not doing some of the skips. Yeah. So. Coming up to the uh, so this is where purely the rocket pistol is going to be useful. So the door, Yato, I did just set a PB on this, so. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, um, the rocket pistol in this section of the game is going to come in clutch. I think somebody is driving a uh, trombone. 
Yep. So in this machine room that we're in uh, now, so the creature has now spawned itself and will wake up. And normally, I have seen in the past. Um, not going to shame skip, but he does occasionally attack that guy. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes he needs a bit of a... A, a, a bit of an attack. But, um, honestly, <laughs> you... Um... Seems you maybe thought. lose my train of thought there. <laughs> uh, but no, and... Honestly... He doesn't come back. But he makes an appearance a bit later on. So even if you killed him, he still comes back anyway. Now, the funniest thing, I've seen different runners do different things in this room. Ah. Uh, I was a little too, some, far, little too far forward. Some fire, the rocket, uh, some fire the rocket pistol to destroy the glowing orbs on those. No, I don't. No, no, some. I'm saying some. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I know. But each to their own. If you get the timing right, you can get through perfectly with no issues. But the glowing orbs on these doors, if you time it right with your shots and precision it, um, I pulled off a weird one for one of the ones yesterday. I'm going to try honestly, it. It looked, abs it looked absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm going to try that, dude. 100%. I don't quite remember the, the setup for it, but... But if you time the, bullet, uh, time the shot right and everything, you can destroy all of them within seconds and by the time you get to the door you can walk straight through it Adder, did I just bypass the grab? You might have done. Such a disappointment. Did I just bypass that? Because normally the animation kind of locks you into like looking at what you've just unlocked. And I was free to run. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I do need you to. I need to show you the different routing for that room that you've just gone through. Yeah. I missed it. I missed the opportunity. Yeah. Um, so the room that Skip's just gone through and shot the door, I pulled off a... I don't know I'm how I done it. I, 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 I wasn't... Yeah, it's not part of my run, so... <gasps> and I wasn't expecting you to get it. I need enough power. I just realized where the can... last jewel is. Uh, but yeah, I pulled off. I don't know how I pulled it off, but I managed to have that door open. No. Whew. Floor one done. There's only two more. <laughs> Got a long way to go. I hope everybody is enjoying uh, the showcase and having an interesting experience with this game. I assure you, this game isn't as easy as I'm making it look. So far, it's been a pretty flawless run. I don't give a 
shit about your family. Crouch, now. thanks. Yeah, Everyone. even though we've not been doing some of the uh, time saves, um, just so you can get the full feel for the game. It's honestly still a pretty good run. Uh, the last one is just behind these, isn't it? Another one. Can I just leave? Never tried to just bypass them. Yeah, you can you can bypass them. Hmm. Good to know. See. Still learning things about this game. Oh. Simmer down, dude. <laughs> My guy literally landed and was just like, I'm here! And I'm just going to have a little lie down. Okay. So we're working yeah, no, our way through, the, through this absolute maze of... Uh, you, you have to double back and triple back and stuff like that to to get through certain places uh right now i'm basically at the top of the i'm almost at the top of the the factory but there's a little there's a little bit more that we have to go down now to then go up even further Yeah, I was going to say, because you still have one more key to get, or one more item to get here, yep. which is a key mold. And then we've got to go all the way back down, almost to the basement. <laughs> almost to the basement. <laughs> There's a reason why I call it almost the basement. <laughs> and you'll see near the end of Heisenberg. Yeah, it's, it is mental. Oh, okay. But, um, so we've got to go and get key mold, which is class known as Heisenberg's key. So we're almost at the end of the game. Well, we're at the end of collecting the flasks. We've got, uh, we've got another section which absolutely has... I don't understand... We've got a section with another character. Can you guys guess what character we are going to switch to playing as soon? That's right, we're going to be playing as Pedro. <laughs> nah, you're playing as me. <laughs> So technically, we are on the highest floor now, and we are going to go all the way back down to the basement. The normal routing for this is to work your way back down the way you came, and now because we've got the key mold, we need to go back to the forge room to uh, to cast a key uh, from from this mold. But typically, the game wants you to kind of go back down to the second floor. Uh, we don't want to do that. It's dark. We want to come down where it's really dark. And... Have to deal with all of this aggravation. <laughs> Alright. Now there's a couple of larger or more awkward enemies that we're gonna have to encounter because we've come back oh i've is that guy normally there Adder? yeah he's always there bro i just so... ran at him like he didn't exist <laughs> <So> <laughs> The machine room, so when you first go and get the first ever mold, the one of the horse, uh, <laughs> once you get... That is the enemy that was in that chair. 
So if you kill him beforehand or kill him afterwards, you're going to kill him twice anyway. So I ignore him. Um, a lot of runners that I've noticed do ignore him. Because he reappears. So technically you can kill him waiting for the mold. Hmm. So now that we're back in the lift, we go all the way back up. All the way back up <laughs> to the penthouse suite, where we actually get to use the key on the door that we just passed on the way in. Now, there is another door, one other door that takes the Heisenberg key, and it's for a partial collectible that you, uh, you have to combine. It's a combinable uh, item, and it's for the second part of his hammer. Um, you really which then you use at the Duke eh, and sell it at the Duke once you combined it and honestly it gives you money wrong weapon right weapon right. so in one of the cutscenes that you skip at the beginning um, this is the guy you were running away from originally now sit down now stay down stay <laughs> down Stay down, sit down. <laughs> Each to the right. Yep. Get on. <laughs> but no, honestly, um, yeah, the key, the Heisenberg key, you can use it in two locations. The one we've used it on, another location to get the other part of the hammer, which, in a way, is brilliant because you need oh, it's money. Oh, so to... much more when you combine it. So much more. I think yeah. it goes from like 8,000 to 45,000. Yeah, it makes it so we can actually unlock upgrades for the weapons, make it so we can get unlimited ammo. And you almost went the wrong way again. I mean, it's fine. I mean, this, this place, as you can probably tell, is a, is a maze. Um, uh, we're now in the basement as well. Yeah. Where we meet, you need to stand up to get it. I got it, I got it. So um, now we we've meet... got the horrific boss battle that took me three hours the other day on PlayStation. This is the Heisenberg fight. But this is also where we I'm a concentrate Chris for the second time. <laughs> so I'm going to take Sweet some uh, concentration uh, time right here. So I'm allowed to just explain a little bit about what's going on. So, like Lady D, um, Heisenberg has uh, transformed into a grotesque monster. Uh, there is a little bit of swearing that does come into this um, because the actual... He does actually uh, call Chris a, uh, a boulder-punching a-hole. But uh, while he's attacking it, um, it's... If you've noticed, it will flash up orange in certain places. They're the weakest points that we need to attack. We need to basically grind him down. Now, this, uh, similar to one of the Re five, oh, Resident Evil 5 fights, can be two or three rounds. I have seen it take longer, but it depends on if you hit all them targets. Ah, uh, you have fun, Pugman. Thank you for all them gifted subs uh, to this wondrous channel. Thank you, my dude. Uh, so now we're going into phase two of the fight. Uh, technically, there's... Yeah, phase two of the fight. Where we're going to get sucked up into the air. I'm going to wait, pull the trigger, and shoot him in the face. 
Now that that's done, uh, we're now on foot. We don't have the tank. Tank. So there you go, there's that uh, infamous quote. Nobody knows where he actually learned that Chris was one of those. Um, but if we time it right, it's only two, three shots to the head. He will go into phase, well, the equivalent of the end of the phase, gets sucked back up. And you manage to grab hold of the tank and uh, blow him up for the final time. Right after I murdered Sorry, that's just the easiest way for me to explain that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That like in a nutshell. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. So now, after this is all done, and he's actually dead, we actually get to go and play as... Chris Redfield. Good old Chris. Mr. OG Resident Evil Raccoon City Geezer. But we don't get to play for him long, in a sense. I mean, it's enough. It's nonsensical that we have to do it, though. Because you go through the entire game, just like this section, apart from the last part of the, 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 the boss. Um, you go through the entire game, upgrading all of your weapons to then have to sit in a tank. And then you have to do this section, which you don't use your normal weapons, which is... Crazy. It is crazy, but um, one of the unlockables is so that you can actually get unlimited ammo for the weapons that Chris used. Yeah, so this weapon is the Dragoon. Um, you can purchase the vi uh, the weapon so that you can use it in your normal, like, in your Ethan section. But uh, the WCX is much better. But no, um, in this entire section, um, so it has just told you that um, Miran uh, Miranda? No, not Miranda. <laughs> that the um, main boss. Yeah, it's Miranda. Yeah, it is Miranda. Uh, turned herself into Mia. I don't know why I started questioning this. <laughs> I don't know either. I just thought, oh, he'll get to, he'll, he'll realise in a second. And if you don't, then we can all have a little chuckle at him. But <laughs> yeah, honestly, though, um, so Miranda transformed herself into Mia, um, and basically, from the beginning of the story of this game, you've actually been with Miranda. So when you had Rose, you had Miranda. Um, but Rose is actually Mia's official daughter, not the Miranda Mia, if that makes English. That was nice. That was, that was actually nice. Yeah. So, these next couple of sections that, um... Skip or Mark Ambrose is in are uh, basically in caged areas. So there's three phases to this uh, section that he's on where you have to kill some enemies, wait for the gun to reload, and then you have to basically rinse and repeat this two more times now. But he is an enclosed area, he's not in. Kind of an open area. No idea. There must be something stimulating it. But each time he takes out these enemies <clears throat> or uses the laser designator, it 
kills the enemies that are currently alive. And it allows him to basically get himself geared up, ready to go for the next section. That was clean. That was really clean, dude. Good. That was really clean. That can get really, really hairy because of the enemies and the way that they want to move and they might come to you when you don't necessarily need them to. Um, and then you, you always run the risk of accuracy and your, your weapon running out, you know? Um, yeah, so that was actually pretty clean. Uh, even for me, that was pretty clean. But here we so, go. Here's big boy. <clears throat> this is Uriah's number three that you attack. So there are multiple ways of killing him. Um, well, only two different ways of killing him. <clears throat> Throw a few grenades. He goes into a down stance. And literally spray him in the back. Can consistently uh, if you time it bad enough or your timing's that bad you use the laser and he fires through the uh, ceiling and you can take him down that way but it's so much quicker to throw the grenades get him to fall down and literally just rinse and repeat shoot him in the back that's it that was good. That was clean. Yep. Yeah, that was pretty clean. I'll take that. Keep going. The rest of you stay above. So we are almost finished. It sounds silly. We are almost finished with Chris. Chris only has one se section in this game. Even though you meet him several different times within the game. We can figure that out later. Focus on the plan. I found it. It's the Megamycy. Captain, I have eyes on Miranda at the ceremony site. Keep your distance. Do not move until I give the order. I know it's too late now, but we really should have told Ethan the plan. There yeah. Wasn't time. <laughs> we didn't expect Miranda I don't want to tell him anything. What do you mean? <laughs> Even so, you but no, in the... Hmm. So, this is the most plot twisty it's ending of all. We enter Miranda's lab at, and shoot a lock off and in the cutscene that we skip we actually meet Mia the real Mia not the Miranda Mia Mia I'm gonna have to check what my uh, my IG yeah, my um, real time is for my my run and see whether I actually got a PB kind of nice So that was, to be fair, that is the most pointless scene ever. Uh, so now we're going, literally, we are going to the. You want the other gun? This is the final fight of the game. We are now going to go and fight Miranda. We're making our way to the battle area. Um, so that was the that was an earmark for the uh, moderation team uh, to get ready with time. Out of my way. Um, yeah. So we're gonna, there's a couple of phases. We can skip a phase if I do this quickly and correctly and my accuracy is pretty right good. Get the right gun out first. I'm gonna do it with a Magnum, what do you mean? You're taking the long route, then? Yeah. You disposed of my false children and awakened the glorious Megamites. Now, please do not worry for the gross. I assure you I'll provide her... So, the quick Oh, he got it! He got it! Oh, you got the skip. I got the skip, yeah! <laughs> So, uh, majority of the time, the quickest way to go through this and to actually skip most of it is to use WCX. Uh, because you have unlimited ammo. 
Time is coming up very quickly. That is... That is... Uh, hold on. One second. When the father's... Met, when you see the father's story is done. That's time. 144.08, I got. Yep. 139.40, IGT. That, everybody, was Resident Evil Village. Um... <laughs> Uh, we didn't really have that many problems going through the run. Baby Skip took a couple of times, but that was literally it. That was the only uh, that was the only part of the run that um, became a problem. But yeah, that was Resident Evil Village. I really want to say a massive thank you to the event for having me, uh, to um, to Mr. Adder for running comms with me. Really appreciate your expertise and your knowledge base, dude, and uh, for being here. I want to say thank you to all my community. And, um, yeah, I'm Markio Bros. Uh, you can find me on Twitch um, and YouTube and that kind of stuff. Um, I tend to really focus on uh, Resident Evil speedrunning, but I do a smattering of other games as well. Um, you'll see me soon at some, some other events. I'm really happy to announce. And, um, yeah, thank you to everybody in the chat that actually came out and... Uh, other Supporting this wonderful uh, channel and uh, came to watch a little bit of Resident Evil. <laughs> Been an absolute pleasure, guys. Been awesome, man. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that and I will catch you on the next one.